So when you're choosing your implants for the matlobe, uh, try to get long ones, uh, a bit thicker, it depends. I mean, that's a big, a thicker one. They work best, uh, especially when we, we are going to use them to line the tray, the pot with. So we'll just peel that. البتنجاني إذا كانت تقيلة بتكون البزرة بس إذا كانت خفيفة بتكون قلب أبيض وبتكون منيح. So in part of tip is when you um, are choosing your eggplants, choose an eggplant that is not dense and heavy, right? Because that usually is filled with lots of seeds and you don't want an eggplant that's seedy. So a, a bit lighter uh, in, in weight is what you want. This is how I'm going to slice mine. I'm just going, initially I'll just do a thin one. But then you want your slices to be about one to one and a half centimetres thick. Right, so we want them thicker because you'll notice when I fry them later, they will soften. Now you're going to go through and you're going to salt these really well. The salt will help um, drain the moisture out of the eggplants. If you place your eggplants on top of each other, the water will run from one to the other. Right, but if we Stand them in a colander like this. Okay, you will notice that the water, right, will start draining down to your bowl or your plate. Drain that for about minimum, minimum half an hour. All right. So, but if you drain them for longer, it won't matter either. Yeah. Anyway, you're very clever, aren't you? <laughs> so here we are browning, uh, frying the eggplants, and as you can see. We cut them at one and a half centimetres uh, thick, but once you brown the eggplants, they uh, really soften, so they will shrink. Something else to remember when you're making your matlubi is whilst you're frying your eggplants, soak your rice, because the rice will need about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to soak. So then by the time you finish frying your eggplants, these will be ready to be rinsed. So all I'm gonna do now is just rinse the rice, Rinse it well and it will be ready for uh, me to add the spices and season it with salt. I <laughs> She believes that we need to use every single grain of rice because you just don't know if that particular grain of rice is actually a blessed one and could be your blessing. Yeah? <laughs> okay, think about the pot that you're going to make your madubi in. Think about it being even all the way through. So some pots are shallow um, and narrower at the bottom and then wider at the top. And as you can see, like mine is even all the way through. It really helps if your handles are a bit lower. Your platter needs to sit over your pot and it needs to be sealed. It needs to sit flat. So you need to imagine, image, that later on, what you're going to do is flip that upside down. And you can see, that it's well sealed. The potatoes, I don't want them to flip with the rice dish, but they will protect the chicken and the rice from sticking to the base of the pot. And trust me, they actually are the best part of the malubi. When they're stuck in the pot and they're seasoned with salt, you will enjoy them, you will love them and I have cut them a little bit thicker as well. My rice that has been soaking, I'm going to season that with salt and I'm going to season that with my a spice, which I call Arabian spice. And toss together, is once you, all your elements are ready, all right, you, all you need to do is assemble it. So here I've got my chicken that I have roughly sh shredded. I cooked it in water and vegetables to get stock out of that as well. My potatoes are ready. This is my seasoned, spicy, soaked rice, and these are the eggplants that I fried. Don't forget to season your stock. Now we're going to assemble. So, first of all, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of rice in the bottom of the pot. Add my potatoes, place the potatoes at the bottom. Really the most important part of your matlubi is the way you're going to line your eggplant so on a diagonal angle you're going to now line your pot with the fried eggplant so you gently just tap it down and you will notice too 
Um, uh, actually, I'm choosing the longer eggplants because you will always have short ones and long ones and you want to use the long ones. Overlap it slightly over the other eggplant. The narrow side is at the top. Okay, because that's the side we're going to fold. You're best off turning your pot to keep going with the eggplants. Eggplant ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add most of my chicken at the bottom. Not all of it, but most of it, so they're chunky. Because when we flip it, the chicken is going to be at the top. It goes on the base over the potatoes. Now we're going to use all the leftover eggplants that we have and I'm going to do one layer so whatever eggplants you have now you need to divide in half because we're doing two layers so now I'm going to do one layer of rice so you're only going to use half to begin with I'm going to layer that over the eggplant then I'm going to now uh, layer with my chicken the rest of the chicken so the remaining chicken And you can see that with my uh, second layer of chicken, I am um, shredding them a little bit smaller. Whether you do or you don't, it won't matter, but I like the ones in the middle to be a little bit um, you know, smaller. Now I'm going to add some more eggplant. Is that it? What do you think? <laughs> oh my God. Very good. Very Is she rolling her eyes at me? <laughs> Very no. good. So, good. here we have a layer of eggplant. Now I'm going to add the remaining rice and we're going to use every single grain of rice. Gently fold over your eggplants, go all the way around the pot and just fold them over. If you're preparing for a dinner party or you're entertaining the next day and this is on the menu, you can actually just assemble your matlubi and just to this stage, so don't pour over your stock, cover it with a lid and place it in the fridge. And then tomorrow, you can actually then we will pour the stock over and then cook it. So here I'm going to pour the stock over the rice, but I'm going to use a slotted um, spoon or use a sieve. This is just to prevent holes. So we, we want to be as gentle as possible pouring the uh, stock over. If you don't have a slotted spoon, use, uh, use a spoon. All right, so this is now ready to go on the stove. We're gonna bring that to a boil and then I'll turn it down to low and let that cook for about 45 minutes. All right, now that it's come to a boil, we're going to put the lid on and I'm going to lower the heat and cook that for 45 to 50 minutes. So that rice looks like it's cooked. We're going to let that sit for about 15, 20 minutes before we turn it upside down. Fingers crossed it will turn. <laughs> okay, this is it. Moment of truth. Fingers crossed. We need muscles for this. I always get Gus to do it. Okay. Now we all know in our stories, Gus likes to tap the pot but not gently tap the, t the uh, pot. Okay, he's a bit aggressive with it, so today we're going to be really gentle. Now, you know if it doesn't work out, it's because I didn't put the hole Oh, in the okay, yeah. That, uh. Last time he poked a hole in the middle for me <laughs> to release what, to release the... Vacuum. The vacuum, but no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to lift really slowly. Slowly. Here we go. This is our toasted pine nuts. We're just going to garnish. Got it? No. High five. Yeah. High five. <laughs> now, remember those potatoes that we talked about? These are it. They are soft, they are caramelised, they are delicious to eat. Leave them on your kitchen bench and I can guarantee you, your kids will go through them. I can guarantee you, you'll eat them before your kids eat them. They're the best. That's why I remember, 
to season them with salt because you eat them. Mm. I enjoy the potato. Mm. They're really good. Mm. Very, very nice. Yeah. Yella, here. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Thank you. Wow. And yet, amazing. Amazing, huh?